It's time for Push to Play, your weekly trophy podcast and all things PlayStation with CJ and Unknown. Thank you for joining us to episode number 10. Struth, who would have thought we got would get this far? Definitely not me, and clearly not unknown. I'd like to, as I said, thank you for joining us. If you've been with us the whole 10 episodes, you know, congratulations to you. That's a lot of time. I think there's almost 20 hours of us talking online now, which is insane. Uh, and if you're joining us for the first time, well, you'll get the handle of what we do pretty quickly, I think. Today, uh, I'm joined by our guest host, Mindy. How are you today? Struth? <laughs> I'm doing good. Doing well. I'm doing well. Excellent. I like to throw in a little bit of Australianism, and I I noticed that you just did so as well. So I think that's one each at this point. Well, Australian and a little bit of mockery, yeah. Yeah, good. And uh, we we have a guest host today because Mr. Unknown has just uh, been a little bit unwell uh, and just a little uh, little busy at the moment. So he'll definitely be back uh, in the the next few weeks as we go. But we'll just change it up a little bit today. And we wanted to to give our listeners a little bit of something to go with. So I thought, uh, you know, we've had Mindy on. I mean, she's a recurring guest in a way. We talked to her uh, probably about a month or so ago. uh, And then we played uh, her guide, her fantastic uh, guide interview just the other week as well. So I, I am very happy to, to speak to you ag- again live, not pre-recorded like last time. It's, it's nice to be back. Thank you. Uh, so we, we thought what we'd do is uh, Mindy uh, introduced me the other day to, to Conan. So I know this is a big thing. Uh, he's a big, you know, superstar in America or whatever of late night television. Not as big here in Australia, but she's been nagging and pestering me for quite, you know, the last few days to watch some of his stuff because he, he recently came to Australia. That's correct, isn't it, uh, Mindy? Correct. He he has this um, uh, kind of remote show, I suppose you call it. He does called Conan Without Borders, where he goes and just kind of checks out another country. Sometimes he does an actual talk show in the country. Sometimes he just plays tourist mm-hmm. for I think a week, and then they kind of cut it together and air that as a as a special some night instead of yeah. doing the actual talk show. And you know, I think he's I think he's pretty funny, and I. Uh, it was it was kind of good timing because um, CJ and I our first kind of real conversation outside of just you know back and forth about gaming. We were talking about um, stereotypes that that Americans have. Australia, and one of the big stereotypes is everything there will kill you, mm-hmm. right? Yes, because you yeah. have you have all the snakes and the crocodiles and the. You know, those very, very dangerous koalas. And, uh, all very true. (laughs) And I, I, like a day or two after that, there was a, um, I don't know why it showed up in my, in my recommended feed, but there was, um, a Conan video. It was, it was a video of him announcing that he was going to Australia. And I, I kind of watched it to see when it was going to happen. And, um, there was this, plant in the audience of a man uh, a man basically playing off of that stereotype saying don't go everything there will kill you and he started listing off you know actual dangerous animals like the the saltwater crocodile and the the death adder and and uh and then they made and up the these bingo dingo the bingo dingo i was gonna say they made these these ludicrous uh what was the, what was the other one uh devil deviled egg platypus yeah, yeah. what was he there was an emu or pl- oh no platter platter of devil plat oh, right. platter puss of deviled <laughs> eggs something that's like right. that yes. and the yeah. what was what was the one you liked it was the it was the the well i liked i liked the platypus one uh, just oh platypus but uh okay. there was a uh, toad toad faking a leg injury to 
Oh yes, that was fantastic. To get, to get you into its van. <laughs> and it was a, I just had this image of this dodgy looking uh, toad in a trench coat. Oh yes. Yeah. And I like the the, the 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 um bingo dingo I like the the uh the yes. The the air breathing playing dead shark. <laughs> yes, that's right. And there was an emu kangaroo, but it was or, or what was it called? I forget. Uh, something like that. Oh, yeah, it's like an emu roo or a emu roo, yes, yeah. something like that. Um, <laughs> so right. I I thought it was funny. I you know, like I said, it played towards these stereotypes that CJ and I had literally just been talking about. And so I linked it to him, and he thought it was really funny. And this show recently aired. And the clips have gone online, so I sent him these clips, and I've been hounding him to watch them, because he had expressed an interest in it as well. And finally he has, and I, I want to know what you think of them. Yeah, well, look, I think uh, I think Conan's a little affectatious myself, uh, you know, at, at, when I first started watching him or whatever else. It, perhaps it's this sort of the American way of being super self-confident and out there, I think. But, you know, once I once I sat down and watched it properly, I did think it was it was hilarious. He, he's very good at taking, uh, you know, sort of mocking himself in his humour, mm-hmm. which I really like, uh, I think, in a, in a comedian. So I did find it great. And then, I mean, in the, the, the series, we should reference that you, you can watch it on YouTube, can't you, all these little clips? Um, so, you know, any, anyone can see it. I would recommend, you know, jumping on um, to the list and having a look at it. They're all, all pretty short, like sort of six minutes, um, some, some much shorter even. And mm-hmm. he sort of goes, so what did he, he, uh, he, he talked to a speech, uh, what was she, like a speech coach, I suppose, therapist. Like, like a dialect, dialect coach. Yeah. Like, a di- like a, you know, like you, like actors would go and say, you know, teach me how to do a British accent, teach me how to do an Australian accent, you know. Yeah, that's right. I think that's what she was. Yeah, yeah. Like, so- yeah, that's right. So she sort of explained to him, you know, how how Oka, uh, the Australian accent is, you know, like we talk where we crunch everything together sort of thing. So, I, you know, I, I'm, uh, you know, shocked by that because obviously I don't sound like that, clearly. But, <laughs> you know, and then so, so he proceeded to, well, I suppose you could say he proceeded to attempt it, couldn't you, Mindy? <laughs> he, he, he did attempt it. Uh, it, it was not particularly subtle. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's, he doesn't actually go there to learn. He goes there to, yeah, you know, to Look, fool I around. That, that segment was was fantastic. But then also there was a a segment where he went to the bush as well, you know, and, dro- and dropped in the infamous, you know, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Uh, uh, that's not a knife. <laughs> that's not a knife. That's right. <laughs> I'm I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's a, look, I know for Americans, that's you know, you know, you know, it, it's a it's a compulsory thing to throw in. But it's yeah. It's so weird because it's in it's in the zeitgeist, and I don't know why. It was just like yes, a two year period Cro- in the eighties, <laughs> and we have not seen him since. No. But it's just in the cultural zeitgeist, and there's references to it just everywhere. And I don't know, not everywhere, but like yes. a lot of things will reference it, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that was great. And I look, I, I we were just talking before we started recording about the the sort of interaction between him and the the, the Bush uh, country uh, guide that he has through there. And like you know, that's uh, I don't know, maybe uh, like Mindy said, she she found that relationship a little you know potentially awkward or something. But I think that's a, a good look into you know maybe the the Australian humour as well. Like you know, I think sometimes it's a it's, it's, I mean, it's very different to the States, you know, we look at in shows and stuff like that. So it pushes it through. Maybe maybe it's a bit more practical. Like at one point there, he's, uh, if you remember, Mindy, he's poking the tree, uh, the hole in the tree with a stick. And Conan says, what are you doing that for? And he goes, I'm, I'm trying to get the spider to come out just so you can see it. And you can... <laughs> You can see this look of shock on his face. And then he proceeds to tell the guy that, you know, we could have just stayed at the hotel and you could have just showed it to me on the internet. (laughs) Well, you know, over a cup of tea. So, you know, I I thought some of that stuff was hilarious, but I suppose that that depends on on your, um, you know. On, you know, on your, on your sense of humor. I I like them. I like, um, like CJ said, we were talking, you know, briefly before we started recording. And I mentioned that I I really like these kind of Conan because he's if if anyone here has a Netflix subscription check they just put um, six of his travel shows on uh, Netflix. Um, I don't think they're his. Th- there's some good ones in there. The ones that I consider his best, like he went to um, Japan. That one's not on there. Unfortunately, it's on it's on the it's on YouTube. It's on their YouTube channel. But for whatever reason, Netflix picked up only six of them. 
And Japan was not one of them. South Korea was, though, and that's a good one, too. But I like the Conan Travel shows. Uh, Top Gear would do, I think every season would do a um, a road trip in some other country. Um, and I really liked those. And, you know, I like it for the comedy, but I, I also like it because it's not... The majority of travel shows, at least here, that you would see on TV would either be focused around the the ancient history of wherever you are which is great but you know i want more or it's weirdly specified to cuisine there's a lot of food travel shows and i don't i don't watch those i i'm not uh, particularly a gourmand um so a lot of it i think would be lost on me but i like these shows that kind of when i personally travel i like playing part tourist part local so I'll go to see, you know, maybe one or two of the big obvious tourist traps that you're going to go see. But I'm mm. seeing these kind of minor hole in the wall, maybe something you wouldn't do if you were unless you were local or, or had a lot of time to spend there as opposed to, you know, three or four days. And I think these like the Top Gear stuff and the and the, the Kona stuff in, in particular He's focused way more on that hole in the wall three or, you know, yeah. I'm here a month as opposed to three and three or four days. And that's what I what I like to see. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, like, I mean, you know, if, if we wanted to watch a subfusk sort of, a, you know, documentary style of thing, I suppose, you know, you could definitely do that. A lot of the travel shows, you know, definitely have that. But it's a nice mm-hmm. balance, isn't it? You get you're a, bit of, a bit of comedy, a bit of a slice of life, if you like you know, of what that country is. So I, I'm very keen to, very to, to see the others. I must just ask you, though, before we move on, what did you think of one of the most deadliest creatures we have here that was shown in the uh, in the clip, The Wombat? <laughs> it's so cute. So there's um, there's a, a clip of, of Conan going to one of those open-air, uh, I guess, what do you call them, like an animal experience? It's not really a zoo because there's not really any cages it's just kind of free range kangaroos and and you can you know walk up and and pet them and and i know i know your your australia zoo the one that the the irwins own is is kind of renowned for that this is one of those smaller it's not that it's one of those smaller obviously kind of well i mean family owned too but like a little family owned deal right like a Yes. I don't think you would call it a zoo. You'd call it like an experience or a park or something like that. So they, you know, he got to pet the kangaroos and the wallabies and they brought up this uh, wombat and the, the, the owner of this park made this big to do about how you don't run from wombats because they can bite. They like to bite the back of your leg. And if you make sudden movements and, and, Run is just going to encourage them to bite more, and I was kind of surprised by this because obviously anything anything with a mouth can bite. I think, you know, I'm not that ignorant, you know, um, but I would not think of you, you would think something like a Tasmanian devil would would go for mm. your legs. You would think something like a wombat or a koala would not strike unless provoked. Yes, look, I, I have a feeling that what might have been happening there is they were sort of setting him up to play the galar a little bit there, I think. And I think I think his deadpan reaction, you know, shows that he definitely fell hook, line and sinker for, for the, the, you know, the perhaps dangerous nature of the wombat. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you live in Australia, like you, you'll know that the, the biggest danger the wombat presents is that it will walk out onto the road when you're driving at night in the country. And they, these are big, you know, they're, they're sizable things and they're heavy things as well. So if you hit them with your car, you can do quite a lot of damage to your car. So I think that's the biggest danger the wombat actually, um, possess, you know, possesses to the, to the Australian people at this point. So I think, I think she might have been pulling his leg that's that's pretty great because there was no there was no follow-up on that to show it other than this anticlimactic no. the wombat did nothing to him yes yeah well they were cradling it at but the it end was as well, well it was it was pretty great and they kind of lampshaded it a bit because um you know they had that big kind of scary trailer music for it and every time the wombat took a step it was like that that's booming right. 
sound that you hear when, you know, like, boom. And it's just this cute little, you know, probably not even 15-pound, 20-pound wombat just kind of walking out of a a kennel. <laughs> well, so if you've just joined here, just, uh, you know, skipped ahead now we're, we're getting by the way this, the this still is a podcast about video <laughs> that's games right, that's right you know well look you know this could be a good thing while you're grinding or something to check it out you know or if you just want to sort of get the perspective of you know what australia is like if you haven't been here before you know it'll, it'll show you a little bit of something i suppose so that would no I, I very much appreciate should we that. should we submit this to your board of tourism yeah look why not you know you know i think what, whatever Actually, works so i should have brought this up but i should have brought this up in private but um Oh, well, Speaking now in your public, board, it's a much better time. Of, <laughs> of your board of tourism, there was an ad here, um, mm. I want to say a year or two ago, which probably means like four or five. Yes. I have no concept of time. Uh, it was, I can't remember the guy's name. It's D- Danny, some comedic actor. Mm. And they set it up as a, just kind of to catenate to what we were talking about before with, with Crocodile Dundee. They set up as a sequel, like he's Crocodile Dundee's son, his American son, and he's going back to to Australia. and And they played this as a as a movie trail. That's what it was. And I remember sitting in the theater, or or it was a or the, my TV, and they were playing it as a TV commercial movie trailer, and just thinking, this looks like an awful idea. And uh, and then Chris Hemsworth, I think it was Chris Hemsworth, comes in. And I'm kind of like, oh, my God, what are you doing? And then you realize that it's a commercial, it's a tourism commercial for Australia. Mm. And Mm. I thought that was that was pretty great, actually. And I will link it to you to watch in six years. Um, I will link it to you now. And I'm sure six years from now, you will finally get around to watching it. We have had a few suspect uh, tourism ads in the past as well, so I wasn't sure which one you were going to bring up. But that one, have I haven't you really? Seen, so that one like, su- okay. like suspect, like uh, offensive? Well, you know, you, you know, well, not not suspect as in dodgy or anything, but just you know, not 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 very impressive. I think, or, you know, you know, I think it would fall short, or you know, of of you know, selling the country that well, uh, or whatever else. But yeah, any, anyway, we should we should slowly catenate back towards our PlayStation games, I think. And can I ask you, Mindy, what have you been playing this week? Well, I'm always on my backlog. Um, so I, what have I been playing? I played, because I don't think your podcast can go for a week without mentioning it, I did play another stack of Liar Princess. Excellent. It's still a very charming game. Yes. Yeah. Metagal I did play. Um, in terms of actual games with substance I've played, Trooperbrook, which is, I think you covered it in one of your drops. It's a point and click. Mm-hmm. I actually really liked it. Um, mm-hmm. I think it lost some focus around the end, but it's uh, it's kind of a love letter to... It's this weird kind of fusion of... of like Twin Peaks and 60s sci-fi schlock set in small town Germany. I actually, I really did enjoy it. And I think, let me check this real quick. I think I am, yes, I am the first person in the world to platinum this game. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Can I ask, I I read a little bit of your walkthrough uh, and I noticed you mentioned something about the controls. Are they different for this game or or a little... uh... They are. It's it's a little bizarre. It's everything is mapped to the D pad, and it just takes a a bit of getting used to. Um, you don't use the face buttons at all. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of awkward. I I I kind of get why they do it. I get the feeling because this came out on on PC a couple of months before mm-hmm. PS4, so I get the feeling it was mapped to to what wasd like you would on a pc and so they just decided to map it for whatever reason um because it's the same Mm -hmm. left hand action i'm not sure it is it is bizarre i think inner world's controls were probably more bizarre because that one had um that one had really weird controls and i um, i just remembered they're weird i'm trying to remember why they were weird well, that was the one, yeah, I, I remember what you're driving at. Yeah, with that. Yeah, it had the bubbles, didn't it? And you, 
Like, like I said, I can't remember why it's weird. I just remember it was mm. weird. Is this one like intuitive? Like, will you pick it up as you play though, or did you find the whole way through it was it was um weird? No, it was it's intuitive. It, it takes you know probably five or ten minutes to get used to. Oh, the X button doesn't actually do anything. Mm. I just need to swap hand. And once you get used to that, you're good to go. Is this one of these games where you can't press a button for the whole way through, like the inner world? Like you can't press the the L two button. No, you can. Oh, uh, no, nothing like that. Um, if you you know if you hit the face buttons, it's just not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. No hint button or whatever that disables trophies. No, I don't think there's a hidden yeah. button at all. Actually, mm-hmm. um, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's a hotspot button, and you're you're free to use that to to help you out. I think it's a mm-hmm. gorgeous looking game. The art style is interesting. Something I I feel like I read that uh, that half of the backgrounds are just models, are scale models. I might be wrong on that, but it looks it's got a very unique look, and I think it's something to do with. I I feel like there's model work in there, instead of full on just kind of mm-hmm. graphic rendering. Like they actually photographed models and then rendered over the characters over it, which is interesting. Okay. Yeah, it does look very good. I, yeah, and as as far as the trophies go in that, is it uh is most things missable? Just or? about everything is is missable. Yes. Yeah, perfect. But it's a it's a short shortish game. Uh, I see. So you could always play it twice, or or play it once with a a walkthrough. I suppose. Exactly. Perhaps your walkthrough. Uh, that's very likely. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And I see, I see. There have been two. Let's see, two videos made oh, okay. of my, of my walker, and I have not t- checked to see if they've credited me. And I will check that when we're done here. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, so we have a celebrity with us as well today, listeners. Very, very <laughs> exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Hardly. Well, I'm, I'm going to check out. What Hardly. else have you been playing? I see some other interesting things here on your list. I, I am. I, I played a uh, Lego DC Super Villains. Mm-hmm. I have this weird goal of platinuming every Lego game, oh. except for Lego Rock Band, because that is not a Lego game. It is a Rock Band game with Lego people in it. <laughs> so, does that include like Lego Worlds, or are you talking about like sort of the... Well, I'll be playing know, Lego like Worlds. The... I keep putting it off. Um, yeah. So right now, since I have platinum Lego DC Supervillains, I, I have to play Lego Worlds and Lego... Um, that's what just came out. Lego Movie 2. Oh, you've done all the others. Okay. I've done all the others. Wow, that it's, is impressive. It's pretty sad, actually. Um, well, because I, st- I actually still enjoy them. I yeah. do. I think they're they're silly fun. There's a charm to them that is... Unfortunately, I think it's lost a bit of charm since they started using, like, movie dialogue instead of what they used to do with the, ver- with the original ones, which was all mm-hmm. miming. And it was just silly because they... they they didn't have the budget to get the movie dialogue or, or whatever. So they'd have to mime out the, the, the story dialogue. So you can understand what's going on between levels. And it was, it was very charming. And then starting with, um, Oh gosh, I don't even remember which one it was. They started, they started literally just taking the, the dialogue from whatever movie they've based it on and, and animating that dialogue. And it's a different kind of charming, but I, I do kind of miss that pantomime charm from the older games. Mm-hmm. Which is your favorite one then, uh, of the of basically all of them? Because you played them all almost. What's your, what's your favorite? I have. Um, you know, I I tell people that your your enjoyment of the Lego series is based on your enjoyment of whatever property it mm-hmm. it's the game is based on. So, like, I really liked the Indiana Jones ones. The Harry Potter ones were fun. I I really liked actually the the Incredibles one. Not not so much because it was the Incredibles. I think they should do a Lego Pixar game. It, it was kind of surprised me they only did the Incredibles, but because it cut out a lot of bloat. A lot of the newer Lego games just have a ton of bloat in them. Just unnecessary busy work. And I was surprised when I when I um, got Lego Incredibles and I started playing through and I realized, oh, my God, there's not like 600 things in the hub world for me to do. You know, there's there's still things to do, but it's. It's probably about a quarter of 
of um mm. you know Lego Avengers, Lego Marvel, Lego DC supervillains. That was really surprised me. I thought, ooh, are you gonna go kind of go back to that? And they're apparently they're not. So, <laughs> is, oh, is it, I don't know oh, that formula. Yeah, see, because I find, yeah, I, I do. I I quite like The Incredibles as well, but for that reason that it didn't have as much going on. I think the the one I played before that was Undercover, which I really liked. I mean, they you know, played like an eighties TV show. It was fantastic, but there was just too much going on. Uh, you know, so much other. There was stuff there was a lot do. in that one. Yeah, and I know I know they're all like that, but it is yeah almost overwhelming all the stuff. And I'm on. I'm I'm glad that one finally got ported because it was on the Switch for a long time. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's an exclusive. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I stacked the um the Broken Sword Japanese Platinum, mm-hmm. and Broken Sword Five, and uh, I I didn't even know there was a Japanese stack of that game. Wow. Yeah, it just it just came out uh like two weeks ago. Oh, it's new. Okay, so it's late. That's that's the weird thing is the game mm. came out in like 2015. Mm, that's right. And yeah. now all of a sudden, t- two weeks ago, we get a Japanese stack. That's very bizarre. And then I also platinumed uh, Secret of Mana, and I'm uh, Mana, and I'm really, really proud of that. Well, that's a big plat. <laughs> that that definitely deserves congratulations. That's a it's that's a big game. Oh my god! It it. It is so grindy. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I don't. I did all these things that are required for the platinum. I really did on the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. I don't remember it <coughs> taking as long as it took me. Yes, right. To platinum it here. Yes. Yeah. Um, the drop rates. The drop rates for some of these things were absolutely awful. I was killing one enemy for seven hours. Not not concurrently thank mm. god but it just it it would not drop this armor item i needed mm. and i thought it can't have, i i can't imagine i would have put up with this as a child was this one of the last things you needed to, to finish the uh the plan it was no actually oh. it really wasn't it was um one of the first missable items one of the first oh. items you can actually miss um, and it took me, yeah, it took me like seven hours to get it. And then after that, it wasn't too bad. I was spending a maximum of a half an hour grinding kills for needed items. I suppose this is the random nature, isn't it? It, it could have been five minutes or it could be seven hours, I suppose. Yeah, and it's it's weird because I actually looked it up and um, ostensibly the drop rate of like just a chest a treasure chest drop rate was like one in 10 and i'm thinking no mm-hmm. it's not like it would be one thing if i was killing this enemy over you know and i just kept getting the chest with the normal item and not the rare item that i needed mm-hmm. but i wasn't getting chests for you know if i was lucky i was getting one an hour one or two an mm-hmm. hour um it was bad and i honestly started to think did the patch do something because I haven't had this problem before, and then I didn't have it mm. since. So, well, you could never accuse accuse this task of being Lilliputian, could you? I mean, this is just <laughs> a mammoth, mammoth effort, really. So, you know, I, look, I mean, I've never spent seven hours doing anything, let alone uh, <laughs> for a random drop. So, I, I'm quite impressed by that. I don't know, you want to make this a seven hour podcast and just chop it? <laughs> well, you know, well, if you, if we we're going to do that, you could have told me, and then I could have started grinding for this thing as well. Killed two birds with uh with one stone. So, yeah, but there no, I, I yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure that was a special game as well because you were telling me you, you played that a long time ago as well. Uh, uh, I did, yeah. I still have my, like I said, I still have my Super Nintendo copy with the box and the, I don't remember if this is one of the ones that came with a map. I think it did. Um, so it's, it's mm. pretty special. Yeah. Um, but th- that grind almost, Yeah. <laughs> I almost <laughs> broke my Vita. Yeah. Um, oh, you're playing on Vita. Okay, yeah. I was playing on Vita because I knew there was going to be some grind. Yes. So I said, and like I talked about on the last time I was here, I don't have the patience to do it on console, but I'll do it on Vita Yes, and just watch TV or something while I do it. It runs well on Vita as well? Yeah. Um, I've seen complaints about the loading screens. There's loading screens on every screen, and I guess there's not on um, mm. PS4. But I got, you know, it's a little bit of an annoyance, but I thought it ran mm. fine. Um, definitely download the patch, though. There's a lot of crashing issues prior to patch uh 1.03 which is the patch i played on and i think is the most recent patch i had i had zero problems with 
mm-hmm. crashing or frame rates or anything like that. Just <laughs> a seven hour grind. I know you said you played this on Vita, but is this a cross save with the PS4 or are they completely? You know, I, I never actually tried it. Mm-hmm. I don't remember seeing a cross save or save import option on the menu. I know it's not a cross buy, so you, so you would, well, I suppose, have to have both versions. No, definitely not a, excuse me, definitely not a cross buy. Um, I don't know. I never, I never tried it. I should have tried it. Fair enough. And then anything else you want to throw in there, perhaps? Another game? Uh, I think everything else I have is, is for uh, Spam of the Week. Oh, okay. Oh, you're going to hold that one. Oh, I stacked, you know what? I do. I stacked, uh, um, well, this is last month, but I stacked uh, the Japanese okay. stack of Forgotten Anne. Yes. And I now am the fastest platinum earner for all three versions of that game. Oh, really? Wow. Really. <laughs> You didn't. You didn't write the guide for it, though, did you? Or the, the walkthrough? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I just want to. I mean, you feel free not to not to answer this question here. But being the guide writer for these games and also claiming the fastest time, are you perhaps holding out on us a little bit on a few tricks that you're you're saving back? I'm so really that, uh, not. You know, I'm oh, really okay. not. Actually, <laughs> um, I was a little sad yeah. because I was the the fastest. Um, Plat earner for Truberbrook, uh, mm. um, you know, when I put my walkthrough up. And then, like, a day or two later, someone beat my time by two minutes using my walkthrough. And I was like, ugh, damn it. <laughs> but no, so, I'm, so maybe I'm really you, not. You need to add some padding. <laughs> I am Just really not sure holding I'm... anything back. Oh, no, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Well, that's very impressive. I, I don't know. I've, I've not tried this Forgotten Anne. I don't know. It's, would you recommend it? Or, I, or yeah, I really would. Um, it's very heavily inspired by uh, Ghibli. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know Miyazaki movies like uh, Princess Mononoke or My Neighbor Totoro or Oh gosh, what I am I am blanking tonight. Um, I'm not actually familiar with them myself. No, I'm trying to think of like the really big ones that you might. Oh, uh, How Howl's Moving Castle or um, Spirited Away. Any of those? Uh, not myself personally, but the game is in this style, is it? Or is that? Yeah, it's that kind of style. And even if you know, even if you don't like anime, they are they are worth watching. Yeah, they're they're very beautiful. Okay. Um, and and a lot of them are very are very whimsical. Mm. Um, but but Studio Ghibli has a very distinctive um art style. You can look at something and say, oh, that is that is Studio Ghibli. Mm. This is clearly inspired by it it a 2d adventure puzzle game with with a bit of platforming in it it's about this girl who's who's called the enforcer yes. and she lives in this this world where everything we throw out becomes what's called a, a forgotling mm-hmm. and they they come to life in this this world and get you know have a new purpose there and they work mm-hmm for the promise of um, uh, heaven and ever after or whatever. And it's just her kind of discovering things about herself and about this land that she's grown up in, um, that she's starting to question whether everything is true. And it doesn't help that there's a kind of a rebel group that's trying to stop, okay. to stop her. Yes, definitely recommend. Okay. Yeah, I might look into this. And it looks like there's a there's multiple stacks, at least three. I can see. So there are three. Japan. There's a there's a Japanese, a Korean, and a uh, an everything else. Yeah. Um, all of them play in English, so okay, excellent. Don't don't worry about um, <clears throat> language restrictions. I hmm. think for the Japanese, Korean, I think you have to go in and switch the language to English. Yes. From like the main menu, but other than okay. that, you're you're fine. Same with Broken Sword, by the way. Uh, all of the writing is in Japanese, but all of the dialogue is in English, and all of the inventory and dialogue options are picture based. So it's actually pretty easy to get through if you want to stack it. Yeah, that's much more accessible then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes, I noticed, it really is. I notice on this Forgotten Anne, I can see quite a few familiar names, all at a hundred percent. So this must be a must be quite a quite a um, 
oh, I don't want to say easy, but quite a manageable platinum. Although I do see our, our, our another fellow Australian there at 4%, but that's not surprising to me. Is that Nitro? Uh, <laughs> I didn't mention a name. He's got, he's got a lot of backlog, and I think he just kind of wanted to get the, the fast stuff out first. Mm. Oh well, you know the the more uh, more longer games he finds are uh, the better, I think, for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, good, yeah. So, and you're going to hold the other one for spam. I don't blame you. I can, I can, I can <laughs> see why. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anything else, or you're happy with that? No, that's that's been my month. Yeah, well, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't have any any massive uh, platinums to claim. Uh, you know, mine are all, well, you know, listeners, mine are exactly what you would expect, I think, down the list. So I, I don't know, like uh, I talked uh, very briefly about the fact that I started Mortal Kombat 11 last time. And I think that's literally all I said was I started it because that was pretty true. But I played uh, a fair bit more of it now. And I think it's fantastic. I finished the story. I think it's, um, I think it's really good. Uh, you know, if you've, if you've played a Mortal Kombat story before, you know what to expect. It's basically a movie with the fights uh, dropped in, but it's it's a um, the the narrative or the plot is all sort of based around time travel and like an alternative alternative timelines and threads. And I, I thought it was really really good. So you know, I think you're looking it's around like a six six maybe eight hours depending on the difficulty you you play it on. You know, and there's no missables or anything. You just play through it. You know, if you if you do fail a fight, you can just replay it. It's it's no issue. That's what I've, I've that's what I've heard. I've heard it's it's a much easier platinum than than previous Mortal Kombat games. And some people some people are actually upset about that, right? I, I think so. I mean, you know, if you're a, I, I think these fighting games, they really, you know, divide players because I think that there's a lot of skill uh, in a lot of these fighting games. You almost have to be a specialist uh, to finish a lot of them and, and the grinding online and particularly the ranked wins online. It can be very difficult. Right? You know, in the past, there's been 10 wins in a row uh, required for Mortal Kombat in, in ranked wins. So that really would sort out, you know, your skill levels i think but that's all gone away this time and and the other interesting thing this time is you can actually watch the ai fight for you so if you don't feel like doing it you can just choose uh you know your character to be ai uh not in the story but but in the rest of the game and it'll just take on the other um computer opponents for you and you'll get the the unlocks and the rewards that way as well uh, and also the the trophy progress so you can a lot of this game you don't actually have to play if you if you choose not to you know you can just sort of watch it <laughs> which you know it, it's a funny thing like i mean you know in, in a lot of other ways you just go oh, it's like a bn or something it's silly but it, it's sort of fun at times to watch them you know because some of the the um the fatalities and brutalities the the inputs are a little bit difficult obviously and you know it's about your distance and your timing so you know the ai obviously pulls it off flawlessly so you can actually watch them sort of chain their moves and stuff and it's and and the uh the um as i said the brutality or fatality at the end it's pretty cool so you know uh, like I, i've done a bit of bit of both i think i prefer to play it a bit but then i'm not not really out for the platinum there was a uh, a massive uh, exploit that was found, uh, I think last week, where you could you could unlock these heads, which was the biggest grind in the game. I think my understanding is, where you needed to for every character, I think you needed to do fifty fatalities and then go into the the crypt area and, and you could smash the head and unlock a chest. And this this cheat, it was it was fantastic, Mindy. I've never seen anything like it, and I'm all over this type of thing. Uh, usually, it it just required you to go to the head and it would just automatically smash it down. So you're saving, you know. 20, 30, 40, I don't know, many hours here. And for for one of the trophies, you needed to do five of the heads. But if you did 10 of the heads, then you could get another trophy, which is, you know, even tougher to get if you did legit or longer, not necessarily tough for longer. And then if you wanted, you could just do all 25 heads and open up that whole section. So I think it took 15 minutes as opposed to, I don't know, many, many hours, I think. So I believe that's been patched now, though. So, you know, me telling you that doesn't help you at all uh, <laughs> at this point. But at least you know that I did it and, you know, many other people did because well, I noticed well, that you, was very exciting. Play it on patch. Or is this an online thing? Well, it's an online game, so you you can't, unfortunately. I, you've, you've missed your chance. I do have a question. I'm looking at this list, and I see that there's a, a trophy for doing these AI battles you were talking about. And, yes. like, the majority of the list is, like, perform different fatalities with certain characters. If the AI hmm. does the fatal like, does the two different fatalities, do you also get that trophy, or do you have to be playing to do it? No, I can confirm that is how I have been getting those trophies, yes, huh. <laughs> by choosing the AI to play for me. And uh, it's good. It usually takes maybe no more than five fights, um, and they will change. It has to be two different fatalities, I think. Right, that's what uh, I see. Character has two. 
Yeah, so it, it's a good way of doing the, the funny thing in the game is that uh, it shows you the moveset for the first fatality, but not the second one until you unlock it. So, you know, I mean, you could always obviously look it up online to, to see what the, the thing is, but the AI is not restricted by whether you've unlocked it or not. It will just perform them, you know, either way. So it is a, it's a great way to get that that trophy, I think. But, you know, there's there's a ton of gameplay there. There's been a lot of misinformation about the game as well, to, you know, claims that, you know, it was a pay-to-win game where you, you had to pay $6,000 to unlock everything and stuff. But all that's been debunked, you know, that's, that wasn't true mm-hmm. at the time. So, you know, if that was holding you back, you know, I would definitely, I definitely look into it and it, i mean it's it's as, as vicious as as all get out uh some of the the fatalities are phenomenal you know I, even for me i'm i'm you know shocked uh which is great you know so but yeah you, you'll definitely you'll definitely see some things so you know I, I would definitely recommend that game if you if you've been sitting on the fence and then i don't know uh, what else did i play uh, a little of the bird game plus i don't know if you'll be playing this at some point mindy this uh, uh rat game that was their new addition to the library or the, the vault, if you like. <laughs> the weekly buttons. the weekly rack game. Weekly edition. Yes. They, they haven't taken on my suggestion yet of the subscription model where they just send the plat and not the game. But <laughs> each week we're getting closer and closer to that point. So, you know, that's not it. But look, this this was a, like, I don't know, like obviously my skill level is very low, uh, as the listener knows, but there was a little bit of, I don't know whether it's skill or just a little bit of like, something involved it's definitely a little bit more than the the metal gal and you know some of their other other things that they've put in it's still very short like you know i mean if, if you're good at these type of things you can probably do it in around 20 20 minutes uh i, I think uh i think more realistically it's probably around 30 or 40 mm-hmm. uh minutes you know again you don't you don't play the whole game you play a couple of levels you fight one of the bosses you do an endless mode for for a little bit which uh, you know potentially is i suppose the most well, I, the levels are quite long, so I suppose even uh, even time spread there. So I found a little frustrating because they introduced this mechanic where you have to hold X to push a lever to open a door, and sometimes the, the it just didn't trigger the lever, and so I just flew straight into the door and died. But, again, I'm not sure if that's my skill level or the poor design of the game, possibly both uh, there. But, you know, either way, that's, that's fine. You know, I, I don't think- know. I think it's telling that they there are no Vita ports of this game. Yes, so maybe maybe they yeah. had some trouble. It it should it, it is worth mentioning. I I do see especially lately people uh complaining about Ratalika, Ratatouille, whatever. Mm. Ratatouille. Yes. Just mm. <laughs> just the sheer amount of games they put out. It is worth mentioning that they are not a development house. Mm. Um they are purely at least as far as I can tell, purely a porting house. So they take games that other people have made, usually for PC, and all they do are port them onto console, sell them for five bucks and give them an easy trophy list. And in their defense, I mean, obviously this is a model that they, they're they sticking with, but one of their earliest games was um, Count Lucanor, a game I actually really liked. And it was a it was a proper list. You had to finish the game. In fact, you had to get all of the endings. So at some point, they flipped a switch and said... Let's just make a list for the first 20 minutes of the game as opposed to let's make an actual trophy list that covers the whole game. And I'm not commenting either way on this. I'm just saying, you know, I think I think they they get a lot of hate for for their current model, but some people call it shovelware. But again, I I don't think it is shovelware because they're not making any of these games. They're just going in and altering the code so it'll work on PS4 and Vita instead of only on PC. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, I mean, they, they must be kicking back money, therefore, to the original, you know, developer so of the game or original creator. So, I mean, that's a good thing, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think. So, you know, I, I think, I, I don't know. I know a lot of, I know there's a lot of hate and a lot of, you know, all sorts of things about that. I think a lot of it is to do, as you say, with the trophy list. I think if the list was longer, um, you know, you force you into doing more of the game, there'd probably be a lot less problem with these games. But then on the flip side, like, you know, for this Bird Game Plus, I, I don't think... I don't think it was without its merits. I mean, it's it's a silhouette game in black and white. You know, I haven't played anything like that recently or, you know, that I can think of off, off the top of my head, so possibly for quite a while. And, mm-hmm. you know, 30 minutes with it I thought was fine. I quite enjoyed it. I think if I had to play that in, in the, the way the mechanics were for, you know, three or four hours, I, I would have would have not enjoyed it. I think it would have overstayed its welcome. But for that sort of, ex, you know, shorter experience, I think it's, 
you know, it, it's fine. I, I think a lot of it too is tied up with the number of stacks in the games. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if there was only one stack, that it would be more pal- palatable for people. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. There, it, everything has its merits. And look, it's only a few dollars anyway. We're not, we're not talking about a $20 or $30 game either. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. It has its place, I suppose. So yeah, in, in there. But uh, as you said, that's their weekly offering this week. So, you know, we, we take it, we play it. Add a couple of plats and then and then move on to things like uh, Sekiro or Sekiro. I'll probably say both uh, as I talk about this. So you know, who would have thought I would try this game? Definitely not me. Uh, it's been sitting on the past the title screen. Well, I did, I did. It's been sitting on the shelf for quite a while because I was pretty pretty convinced that what was going to happen was I'd load in and I would just die straight away, and I would just keep dying straight away, and there would be no gameplay for me at all. And so I just wasn't interested, but I, I did put it in and I started it. And it, it's not like that at the start. I'm sure that's to come, <laughs> but it, it's not like that at the start. You, you get a good 20 or 30 minutes of stuff you can do that's, that's not difficult at all. And, it, it, you know, it sucked me in. So I, I probably played it, I don't know, a couple of hours in the end. And, you know, I, I don't want to get into it because obviously I'm, I'm very early on or whatever. But one thing I noticed was it can, comes very fast at you. It's a very fast game, which, you know, I, was, I think I was expecting like it was going to be block run back, lock, run back, and, you know, things are happening quickly. I'm sure maybe if you're, you know, your strategies, maybe that does play a little that way, I'm not sure, but there's a a lot of rolling and, you know, you're always moving, which, you know, interests me a lot more. And, you know, it sort of got to this point and we came out because there's some beautiful cutscenes woven in and you come out of this tunnel thing and there's just this field of uh, like white, uh, like flowers, if you like. Uh, it's a, a cut scene. And it's just, because the game is, is quite dark, it's just sort of light section and it's just beautiful. And I sort of think in, in my mind then it triggered that, you know, I really should try and play a little bit more of this game. But then literally 30 seconds later, the king, which I imagine is probably going to be one of the main bosses later on, turns up and, you know, uh, without going into it, or else you, he challenges you or you challenge him and you get into this fight where you're actually controlling it. And uh, the fight lasted probably four seconds for me and my hand got chopped off. Because you you killed him or because he killed Oh, no, 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 he killed me, of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and he chopped off my hand. And the first thought in my mind was, you know, because I know this is a very tough game, the first thought I thought in my mind was, oh, shoot, how am I going to play this tough game with one hand? You know, because I, I assumed that, you know, you're supposed to beat him and you keep both your hands. Uh, but obviously, no, that's not what happens. You are supposed to lose your hand there. And the, the, you know, it's a fight you can't win, obviously. And the game continues from there. So so I, w- I was relieved there, I think. But, you know, we've had a, a couple of, I mean, I know Pelzio talked about the game and said it was fantastic. So, you know, obviously, if you're from that that style of Souls game, you would already be on it. But if you're, if you're not, if you're more like me, maybe intimidated by these games, uh, you know, it might be worth a try. Like, I'm sure next week I'll, I'll have got to a point where I just can't pass and I'll throw it out the window. But there, there is at least some, you know, some gameplay there definitely before it gets to that stage. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, it, it could be worth a, a look. I, do those sort of games interest you at all, Mindy? Or, or uh, no, it's, it's a Souls-like. Um, yes. Yeah. I might try it in, on an alternate account. Um, mm. But generally... No, I if if I know I'm just going to be absolutely awful at it, um, yeah, it's it would be an exercise in frustration. I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the line. Like, I have no problem being awful in games. That that's fine by me. But I think, yeah, I, I don't I don't like to have to repeat the same sequence over and over and over again and not make any progress. Right. Uh, and I have a feeling that is what is going to happen very shortly in this game. But, you know, it hasn't happened yet. So, you know, if I get, you know, I, I got 4%, so that's good for me. That might be enough, you know, it's time <laughs> to move on. <laughs> I don't know. And the, the, the only other thing, uh, I just started this the other night, and it's it's great you're on as a guest today because I think this game, uh, Heaven's Vault, is definitely a game, a game for you. It's a... Uh, uh, I think we were talking briefly about it uh, before we started recording, but uh, but not too much. Uh, so I, I think you, you don't know too much about it. Was that correct? No, or... I don't. You know, I saw because the, the trophy list for this came out a long time before the game came out, like a month or two. I remember seeing it on on PSNP because it, it just recently came out, right? That's right. Yes. Uh, As I'm in being... like oh, two weeks ago. 16th of April. Yeah. So yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. And, uh, I just I remember looking at it and thinking, so there's this there's this PS3 game, Unearth the Trail of Ibn Butada something like that, and I kind of thought this looked like 
that. Like it was going to be this. And I don't know why. I, I mean, obviously she's wearing the, or it's set in the, the Middle East somewhere. I don't know. I, I kind of got that feeling of it, it's, it's a knockoff. It's another kind of uncharted knockoff, like, um, like unearthed or, or um, Adam's venture. And it's going to have that same kind of feel. I, I can't describe what the feel is like, yes. but that it would have that same kind of feel. And so I kind of wrote it off. And then I actually watched mm. a trailer for it a week or two ago. And I was like, oh, this is more of like a puzzle adventure game. I, I'm actually kind of into this. So don't, you know, don't judge a game by its cover. But it's, you know, I'm forever backlogged. So it'll probably take a, <laughs> That's right. a little bit for me. Unless, you know, unless someone sponsors me to write a walkthrough as in gives me the game it'll be a while <laughs> well it could be i actually think there may be just looking at the trophy list i see no one's got the plat and, and one of the trophies is at zero percent so it's possible it's glitched but it, it's also possible that it's not i mean it's only new so so uh you know not too many people have had it yet i think writing a guide for this well, I'm not sure how it'll end, how it all comes together, but I have a feeling writing a guide for this game will be difficult because it's, it's I don't know how to describe it. Like, I don't think they did the best job in their description either, unfortunately. But, I mean, in a way it's like a VN, mm-hmm. uh, I think. Like a lot, of the, a lot of the times you don't control the movement. They just, they just move for you or you can move within a small section. But it's a highly uh, dialogue-based game, a word game, if you like, uh, where you're, you play as a historian on a, a sort of a, you know, a future realm, I suppose, or something, a future time uh, to these people uh, who are obviously maybe the more superior or more technological advanced uh, people in this world, if you like. And they, they don't, they don't believe in history. So they see themselves as a, a part of it. So this, this person, you know, she's a, uh, you play as a female character. She's a specialist in sort of, you know, deciphering languages and stuff like this, but because they don't have much interaction with history in the past, she, she doesn't have, you know, the books, the documents and all this to sort of, you know, uh, further, further the study, if you like. So, so that's how the game presents it. So, so basically the, the point of it is you come across these artifacts and you sort of have to decipher the language, if you like. And there, there is an overarching story that you're looking for a certain person, but to do that, you need to decipher these artifacts and the words to sort of get clues on where to go next, if you, if you like. So, the difficulty and, and the uniqueness of this game is that for the first object you get very early on in the game, it only it's it's a three three words to decipher, and they only give you three choices. Mm-hmm. So obviously you're going to decipher it correctly, but then as the game goes on, you get about three to four choices per word, and most of the uh, the inscriptions are three words long. So they can look familiar to the, the 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 three base words, if you like, that you've already deciphered, or they can be sort of you know different, uh, you know. Uh, so so you're gonna like they may use an element of it or whatever. Unfortunately, they don't use one of the three words though in the at least in the first four or five ones that I've done so far. So you, you're basically taking a guess. Uh, maybe an educated guess or maybe just a total guess in the dark in in one or two of them. The problem comes, though, when you make that guess that it sort of locks it in for you. Now, you can go back and change it later on, but it doesn't tell you if the guess is right or not. So now you progress, assuming that that symbol means that word. And of course, as you decipher the next one, you're gonna you're gonna build on that and stuff. So when you get further on in the game, I, I got in about two three hours, I think, last night. I got to a description where I recognized one of the words, and I was like, "Oh, that's uh, holy! I got that, you know, a couple of hours ago. I can put that in." Mm-hmm. So I put it in, and then I'm trying to work the sentence structure out around it, and it's and I gave it to it, and it said, "Holy is not correct," and oh. I thought, "Great." So now I need to go back to the very original time I found that word and, you know, rethink it, I suppose, choose another option, but then I'll have to go back to all the instances I use. So in effect, it may be putting out almost everything I've done in that sort of line, if you like. Oh, that's not cool. Well, I mean, it is and it isn't because they use this timeline, like a bit like a VN down the bottom. So you can jump back and forth to the puzzle. Oh, well, at least least there's that. Yeah, but it's going to take, I think, like a, I mean, you would have to be fascinated by words, I think, to do this because when you're sort of guessing, you're, you're looking at the structure of the sentence to sort of, you know, like a, to figure out what, what could possibly be an option, I suppose. But 
for mm-hmm. one of them, I, I got a little stuck. And so I thought, I'll just read a little review. And the, the guy had actually made the same choice I had for a word. And he said, yeah, about four hours in, he realized he'd made a mistake and it, it really held him up. And then when he changed it, it opened up. So I think, you know, I, I think it's a it's a good game. It's very beautiful in, in a simplistic way. It's a 3D game, but the, the people and the, the animals and all the life are, are 2D. So Mm -hmm. it's got an interesting sort of feel to it there. And you sort of travel between worlds. So in a way, it's almost like a a point and click, you know, you're sort of in one area and then you travel a little bit and you're in the other. Uh, The next area, there's no, you know, open worldness or anything like that that to it. So I I just wonder with the, the, the guides and with the trophies, I think it would be very possible to finish this game and not translate the 30 words, possibly mm-hmm. only even translate one or two if, if you made a mistake early on and didn't realise, because, of course, it doesn't hold your progress. You only need to translate part of the word to figure out where to go next, uh, part of the um, the inscription, I should say. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, so quite complex, but yeah, I, I quite like it. I, I thought I might have bounced off it quicker, but I'll definitely be going going back to it, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Interesting. I think that's a that's a um a, a sparkling review from you. If you say you're going to go back to something, <laughs> yes. Well, I do like unusual things, so and different things. So yeah, and I, and I, I think too that you know the fact that I, I really appreciated the fact that I could get so far into it and and base so many other well you know four or five a couple of hours work uh, base it on what I thought it was, and it turns out that it isn't that. And so now I have to, you know, go back and think about mm-hmm. what it could be uh, and, and how it'll, it'll line up. So I think it's quite rewarding in that sense sense as well. And there's a little exploration in there as well. So I don't know, you know, it's not particularly cheap. Oh, I think it's like a half, like a three-quarter price game perhaps. It's definitely not a full price game, yeah. So, you know, if, you, if you're on the fence with it. but So like the twenty nine ninety nine mark, something I like that? I think so, yeah, yeah, in, in that range, yeah. And just, just keep in mind that it's possible that a guide, I, I also have a, I wonder if it's random in the word choice, the first three words. I was going to, I was going to ask you that. Is it one of those things that once someone figures out the the um translation if, if it'll be an easy thing you can breeze through in two hours because you know what all the symbols stand for i think so like i mean even if it was randomized if you had a list of all the symbols in the game and the, and the word corresponding then i think it would be very easy uh, i'm not even sure that it is random so it's possible that it's the same words you know same uh, inscription for everybody uh so which would make it incredibly easy i think but I also, I'm sort of hoping it's the sort of game that you get to the end and then you can go back and just f- fill it in very quickly if you made mistakes. Mm-hmm. Although uh, just looking at that trophy list, I hope it's not the sort of game where you finish and it goes, well, you only did this, bad luck. You, you need to start again. Because uh, I'm not sure it would be fun to play a second time. I think the novelty would wear off. But, you know, if, if you're not worried about the plot per se, it's definitely interesting and unique. Yeah, I haven't come across anything anything like it before. So I don't know, some some interesting things for both of us there. I think I'll put it on my uh, my backlog list. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure you need another thing on that list. So excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I I get one thing off of it, and three things get added. Well, that's that's how it seems to work, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so well, let's see if we can find something else to put on your backlog list. Why don't we have a look mm, at what's great. coming out this week? Alrighty. So wh- what would you like? There's a there's another ten things. There's like a there's like a yeah. lot. There's like. 10 or 12 there is a lot so maybe rather than do them all would you would you like to talk about just one or two of them maybe read us the description or sure um i will start with uh let's see let's go with the rat offering of next week uh my big sister Mm -hmm. my big sister is a game about two sisters trying to return home after being kidnapped by strangers across multiple chapters players clear puzzles to advance through the game's story with many secrets and multiple endings, you'll have have your work cut out for you to get the ending these sisters deserve. So this looks like a kind of a horror adventure. I have pulled up the trophy list, and I, I kind of touched on this briefly mm-hmm. before, but this this reminds me of of kind of Lucnor Rat. It's a full trophy list, and I, you know I have not played this game. It's it's going to be another port of a PC game. But at first glance, it looks like you actually have to play this game, which is fantastic. Like I, you know, like I said, for for Luke Nor, you had to play the game. Um, mm-hmm. It was a well thought out trophy mm-hmm. list. It was, I should say, it was a thought out trophy list, and this looks like it is as well. 
It also looks like this will be six stacks as well, because I see pairs for beta cross by. Oh, well, that I mean, that's just going to be that's just going to be what they do. Yes. Um, yeah. This one will work but, on the beta. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, this is this is going on my backlog. Log actually, um, okay. it looks it looks interesting. I I have not played all of the rack games. I actually haven't played most of them. I think. Oh yeah, you've got you've got much uh, joy ahead of you. <laughs> but this looks uh this looks <laughs> kind of fun, actually. I dig it. Good. That's a, that's an endorsement there. You, you never, and look, who knows? Maybe you'll end up guiding it. Who knows if it's that type of game that needs one? Actually, you know what? It's the kind of thing I would guide. But I'm taking a look at the. Uh, the list and someone I know is uh, has earned the platinum and she is very likely to write a guide for it. And so I will leave that to her. Excellent. So there will most likely be a guide if, if it's that type of game that needs one uh, on release. Excellent. Here's hoping. Yeah. Good. What am I going to pick? I'm going to pick reverse crawl. Let's see. So this is PS4 digital. And let's see what it says here. You're dead already. Oh, <laughs> it's just basically like every game I play. Uh, but such a trifling inconvenience isn't going to stop you, the Revenant King, from reclaiming your throne. Reverse Crawl is a fast-paced turn-based strategy RPG that lets you lead mobs of monster minions and back from the grave goons into battle against the elite armies. Ah, don't put a comma in or a full stop of the dastardly Red Queen. There you go. <laughs> Good. It's it's good. It's important to get as many words as you can in a sentence, just in case you know they charge you for full stops or whatever. Uh, so that's that's lovely. But you know, I don't know. That looks very indie, and you know that's that's really all I have to say about that one. If that interests you, good for you. Uh, if you do want to, do you want to? I'm, I'm sure that doesn't interest you hugely. That one indie. So I you like know to... I might look at it. I might look at a demo. Yeah. See what happens. The problem with these games are they tend to be way harder than you think. It'll either be really mm -hmm. easy or really hard. They're never in the middle. So I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe it'll be the first one in the middle. Would you like to pull out another one? Is there any others? There's, there's a lot of smaller games this week. Yeah, this looks to be like all indie stuff this week. Mm. Mm. Um, Let's see. What do we have here? Uh, Lost Artifacts Soulstone. Let's see. After the Soulstone is stolen during an auction in the National Museum, Claire and her helpers witness the revival of the Terracotta Army and its Emperor. Go on a journey through a country full of myths in the exciting casual strategy game. Oh. Lost Artifacts Soulstone. Was not expecting strategy game. I like this. I mean, the artwork looks pleasing to my eye. And it says the word casual in it as well. So, you know... <laughs> This is this is a must. so maybe you'll get past the title screen. Well, you know, I don't know. I like the idea of myself playing this, uh, whether I actually will or not, I don't know. But it does look good that mm. picture as well. It looks interesting. So I like the dragon. The, that strat the strategy part of the loop. I you know I looked at the picture. And I was kind of listening to myself reading the yes description, and I assumed puzzle game, maybe platform, and then strategy came out of nowhere. So that's a. Uh, mm. Well, one one thing we have learned doing this and reading these descriptions is it's not necessary to use the actual real definition of the word. You can just throw in strategy or <laughs> real time or, you know, turn base. It doesn't necessarily have to mean what you think it means. You just, just put it in the description, you know. It's, a, it's an effective marketing tool. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what, what sort of strategy strategy game that, uh, that, that, that presents. But hmm. who knows, maybe another one for you to guide perhaps. In fact, I mean, any of these would do. What else? I'm just going to pick one randomly because, oh, this will interest someone, surely. Uh, Frain, Dragon's Odyssey, PS4, Vita, oh, digital cross by, excellent. An Odyssey to the World Below. Set out, set out four in search of a missing girl and venture out in a fantasy action RPG. Take on enemies with weapons and magic in quick-paced action battles. Explore dungeons, craft items, upgrade weapons, cook dishes, and enjoy your quest with a variety of original and colourful characters. Hmm. That would probably be a, a little bit grindy, but, you know, a good, a good time sink. You know, it's interesting. For original and colourful characters, that is the most generic description of a yes. JRPG I've ever heard. Yes. That's well. I mean, you know, you could just copy and paste most of these games, uh, these uh, JRPG style things. I, 
Explore dungeons, craft, upgrade weapons. Wow. <laughs> I always get nervous when I'm publicly, you know, speaking or reading something and I read something like set out four in. And then I'm like, oh, this, this is probably <laughs> going to go bad for me. But they did a remarkable remarkable job of, of turning it around there. So congratulations mm-hmm. to whoever wrote your description. Yeah. That's good. But, yeah, it's probably probably not a bad game. Those type of games. What and uh, just quick special it's shout out. There's a Lovecraft game it's... coming out. Lovecraft's Un- Untold Stories is an action roguelite with RPG elements. Explore randomly generated levels based in HP Lovecraft stories, fighting cultists and monsters from the mythos, improving your weapons and gear, solving puzzles, and looking for ways to defeat the great old ones and the outer gods. Are you a fan of these Lovecraft uh, universe world? I, you know, I, I've read a bit of it. I, I would not say I know much about it. Um, mm. but what I know. I like things that are called uh lovecraftian or inspired i tend to enjoy mm. um it's mm. just a matter of me carving out the time to actually sit down and, and read everything mm. Mm. what yeah, about you uh, yeah i don't know i tried um i'm trying to think there was one recently a call of uh, cthulhu is that was that was that that was lovecraftian i think yeah yeah it, i don't know it, it, it's very it, yeah, I mean they're a they're a lower lower budget game, which is totally fine, but sort of quite involved. I I thought, yeah, I don't know, a little bit, yeah, no, not my. So it was very dark that one in particular, but yeah, it was it wasn't quite what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. I think so. That's on my list yeah. too. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. There was another one though, which uh, this was last year, where it was a top down sort of you could co op at um, a shooter, which I thought was really good. Uh, set in that sort of style and world, it, it eludes me. I'm sure that someone in the, the listeners will know what I'm was talking about. Was that the the Tesla versus Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. Tesla versus that's Lovecraft? Right. I think. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, I, I quite. I don't know if you played that. I quite enjoyed that one. I have um, not played it because it's a it's a twin stick shooter, right? It is, yeah. 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 You can do solo or co op. Either is, is fine. Yeah. It's quite good. I would I would recommend that. So yeah. I don't know. There there's something there for, for everyone. And then there's a couple of other indie things as well if you're um if you're looking for things. But it looks like every everyone's sort of staying out of the way of days gone at the moment, which is, is probably best to do. Um, you know, while that uh while that game's sort of still sitting, because it is a it is a massive game. Uh as we're here. So what should we? Where are we up to? Oh, we're sort of up to the news, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. An hour so in. I, oh, are we going to yeah, cut oh, this one in half as well? <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're going okay. We, you, you'll see. I'm going to whip through this news. It's going to be. It's going to be impressive because the first two items. Now, seeing we don't have unknown today, did you notice I snuck in a few Microsoft things? Uh, so you know he couldn't censor it out. But the first first thing I don't know. How, are you a fan of solitaire? Surely you've spent many an hour playing some Microsoft Solitaire. Indeed. Uh, you know what? I'm so old. I've spent many an hour playing actual Solitaire. Oh, Like wow. with a real deck of cards. Yeah. Jeez, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be happy to know that they've finally been honoured. They're in the video game Hall of Fame. So that seems fitting. Well, good I for think, them. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. Who, who would have thought there was a video game Hall of Fame? But, you know. There is, and they're in there, so that's excellent. Uh, I and remember the, uh, when uh, they... when uh, Windows 10 came out, and everyone was angry because they couldn't find Solitaire. Mm. I think I think that was it, or they announced that they were not going to do it, and everyone got. They did the same thing with like with like MS Paint. They're like, we're not going to use, you know, we're not going to put this on our our new systems anymore, and everyone just got really upset about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I you'd probably be hard pressed to find someone that hasn't played it, you know, from you know. I, I think, I don't know. So good, as you say, good on them. So this next one now, this next one is fantastic. I don't know, uh, you possibly because you're you're more PlayStation centric, you may not have come across this one, Mindy. But so this week, Microsoft um, updated their their terms of service, if you like, uh, and their community standards. And they, they you know, part of it was the it, what, what they did, deemed or uh, agreed upon as acceptable trash talk. I don't know. Had, had you come across this at all, Mindy? You're joking. No. Oh, so you didn't know about this? Yeah. <laughs> So they put out a guide of what you can and can't say, if you like, uh, in your gaming. And I've just got a couple here just so, you know, because I know most of our audience is obviously PlayStation-centric. So you might just be be amused, I suppose, by by what is is a, uh, is a, a not allowed. These, these were examples of things that they've obviously heard or they feel are not acceptable. So the first one, I can't believe you thought you were on my level. Yes, well, that, that's incredibly harsh. 
if I heard that on the mic, I, I would I would not be happy. Uh, hey, that was some serious potato aim. Get wrecked, trash. Have you ever been accused of having potato aim, Mindy? No, I usually get accused of being a twelve-year-old boy. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, according to Microsoft, that would be allowed. So, <laughs> well, I'm 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 looking at this and I'm seeing the, the gist because you have three or four examples here. These are straight. The from gist me. of it no. is is removing personal attacks because the the sentence that is unacceptable is yes. that was some serious potato aim. Get wrecked, trash. And the acceptable trash talk mm. is that was some potato, some serious potato aim. Get wrecked. Yes. So yeah, I did actually only just notice that. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, when you're you're playing Call of Duty online, I mean, that's always the reference I've heard to your mother. You know, her potato aim, and uh, and how mm. you're going to take that. So that it's look, look at this one. Cheap win. Totally expected <laughs> from you. Oh, that should be, I think. And well, you know, I get that all the time. I think that's a mark of respect. I, I would hate for that to go away. You suck. And Get out of my country. I mean, clearly, something is, <laughs> has has been censored here because it's totally expected from uh, something. Oh, yes. And the acceptable talk is cheap win. Come at me when you can actually drive without running cars off the road. Yes. Well, that's how I, I play most racing games. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that's acceptable. <laughs> so I think, you know, basically they're saying just don't be a dickhead. What I find interesting about this is how are they going to, you know, how are they going to implement this? I mean, unless they've got someone all the time just monitoring every public lobby, what are they going to do? Is there any kind of of report system? If there is, how are they going to prove these things did or did not happen? I think, I mean, the first part of the the document, this is, I've just lifted these these quotes directly from it, but it was all about community building and, and you know, club building and all this sort of stuff and, you know, self-policing and, and building a stronger community, which I which I think is great, you know, and add, only adding value to the community. Like if, if, if something you're doing, you know, doesn't add value, you know, then just keep it to yourself or, you know, if it doesn't, you know, just, just be maybe more observant of other people, I think. But, I mean, the, the, the games that you tend to speak to people, Oh, I mean, I mean to be fair, that could be said of just society oh, and course. not just of course. video games. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not just you. Yeah. Let's maybe you know, yeah, acknowledge right. other That's people. Right. You know, so like it, it's I don't know. It, just, yeah. just don't be a dick. But, like, if I were to start a religion, that would be like the only tenet: don't right. be a dick. <laughs> You know, I mean, as you say, it's common sense, but I, I like, suppose they're covered by putting it in there or whatever else. But it, it is amusing reading, considering what you would he- hear versus what they, they've said you would hear. But, you know, it, it's a lovely, it's the thought that counts, you know. And, and being the superior platform uh, that Microsoft is, they do need to lead the way on these things. Uh, you know, Sony is, is all over the shop with its censorship and, you know, whatever else is going on. So it, it's good that they are, they're, they're laying down some firm rules on how to talk to people. It it does make me wonder what went down over at Microsoft that they're That's putting right. this out now. That's right. I mean, this kind of trash talk is not a no. new thing. No. no, I don't know, but you know, maybe maybe someone was bored that day in the office, so they they you know decided to throw <laughs> throw some things in. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, anyway, so so that's you know that that is what it is now. The next one I threw in for you because I thought you you like Castlevania games. I think I uh, do. So this must interest you, or maybe interest you. I don't know. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night coming June eighth. Yeah, I've been you know I've been keeping track on this one. Mm. It was it was Kickstarter. It was a Kickstarter Metroidvania. Um, yes, they had a big graphics overhaul recently. Um, and it's coming out, I don't know when it's coming out. Oh, June 18th. So yeah, it's coming out June this summer, which will be exciting. On everything, by the look. So that is, that is exciting. Yeah. Well, is this something you would, you would play? Oh yeah. Again? Yeah. Oh yeah. Excellent. Um, looking for, probably not a day one cause I'm poor. No. But definitely kind of top of the backlog list. Well, I, I know there's a lot. I've heard the chatter around, so I know there's a lot of interest in that one. So that's that's exciting that that's coming out. And crowdfunded, you said, too. So that's awesome. It's good good to see. Good to see. Uh, and then the next I two. Think that, I think that one was kickstarted. Yeah, it's possible. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. I, I'm not no, thinking. it was kickstarted. Yeah. This is back in uh, uh, 2015. Yeah, excellent. And if you, I see here, if you've got the Nintendo Switch, you will also be getting it as well, just a week later. But you're you're still getting it, so that's great. It will literally be be everywhere. 
unavoidable, uh, I suppose. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it'll be avoidable for me because I don't like Castlevania, but for the for everybody else, it will, it'll be somewhere for you. Uh, the next two, probably more for me. Obviously, I'm getting a little bit excited because we're getting closer to the next expansion or the new expansion that apparently was never going to happen. We were all expansioned out, but now we're not uh, for Final Fantasy XIV uh, that's coming out uh, in July, the 2nd of July, uh, unless you pre-order it and you can get it a little bit early if, if you want to do that. Uh, so the there were two little things here I found fascinating. I don't know, uh, you're, you're not an MMO player, I know, Mindy. Have you ever dipped your toes in that, that sort of field or that water? Yeah, that I have. Um, I... <laughs> I'm going to show my age here again. That's all right. EverQuest or how far back are we going? I played some EverQuest. Yes. <laughs> I had a, a, a friend in um, high school who played EverQuest and I would hang out with him quite a bit. And when we did play EverQuest. Um, but that was, I think that's the only MMO I've really played. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't um, I, I get, I get why people enjoy them. Mm. I really do. Um, just not, not really for me. No. I, I think you really only have one MMO in you in your life. I think <laughs> I think there's such a time sink as well. And I, I do think there's a there are some people that just live them. I think, you know, it is their life in a way that mm. they just, you know, become absorbed and, and in it. But it, it's a I'm I mean, you know, for myself I, I drop in and out of it. I think I'm I'm pretty much up to date with all, all the content, but there's obviously a ton of stuff that I haven't done. There's uh just you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours. Of stuff but you know they're, they're great things you know you can be in a guild and you can you know meet people that way and, and do stuff so you know it's it's sort of fun uh, as well and we're sort of lucky oh well, you know i know there are guilds all around the world but there is a fantastic guild here uh in australia phoenix rising uh, based in australia that i sort of managed to luck, luck box myself into uh when i started playing the mm -hmm. game and it's made it very enjoyable but uh, but uh, what i was going to to mention because i didn't know about this was that some gamers on one of the uh the other servers uh, that i don't play on uh but obviously within the same game they've started a magazine which i think is a lovely thing to do uh huh. an in-game magazine if you like so it's a, it's a real printed physical magazine i assume uh and digital uh, but it, it you know it looks at things like in interviews with a local business owner and fashion photo contests racing forms as well so i think that's lovely you know if you didn't have enough of the game already now you can read about it when you're when you're not playing and stuff so i don't know it sort of blurs the line i suppose between reality and, and game which is is awesome you know if you're if you're into it in in that that sort of you know, that respect. And then the other part, which, you know, in, in my quest to, to, to draw more people into playing this game, I noticed that you if, you, if you start this game now, if you if you buy it or whatever, and it's basically, you know, almost free, I think maybe $20 to get, get the game or something, they'll actually give you the, the first expansion, first expansion? Uh, Heaven's uh, Ward for free as well, which is pretty good. You know, I, I'm sure there'll be a, a um, well, there is a Game of the Year edition already, which is, is also quite reasonable. Obviously, the sunken cost in this game is that it is a subscription game, so you will be paying mm -hmm. a month, uh, you know, to be aware of that. Uh, as far as the plat goes, because, you know, you never hear about trophies in this game, it, it is apparently manageable in one month, uh, but that would be a very intense month because of the way the levy system works. Uh, oh, so, uh, is it oh, doable in one month? Uh or six months, sorry. I think it actually, I think it's three months. You can do everything but the levies. You, you need to come back in because you only get one of those a day. But from my experience, I did sort of grind the platinum a little bit at the start because I didn't think I would play the rest of it. And now having played the rest of it, I sort of wish I hadn't because I think a lot of it would come naturally if you just played the game uh, and you didn't, you know, do your hundred dungeons or whatever, um, or thousand mm -hmm. items. So, you know, uh, if you're on the fence in that and the, the cost of the subscription does not bother you, it's a fantastic game. Uh, and probably the best time uh, now is to, to get into it now. I don't know. You know, hopefully I convinced somebody, you know, I've definitely convinced yeah. myself <laughs> to continue on with it uh, in that massive time sink. So that's our, that's our little bit of news this week. I've noticed listening to some other podcasts around the place, they're quite well informed with their news. So I thought, you know, this week I would do a little bit of reading. You know, not, not to promise we'll be doing that again, but, you know, it, it's, it's a good start, isn't it? It's a good start. So it looks like we've come to that time of the week where we take a look at the spam games. So, Mindy, would you, uh, I know you're holding back on one from your list that you've played. Did you want to start with that one? I am, and it's a bit of a contentious one. Uh... Please. It's this uh, Tower of Dragon Asia game, which is a 
some sort of kind of oh gosh i'm blanking on the name of that old game with the uh, joust it's like a joust kind of game like an old atari game Mm -hmm. with dragons Mm -hmm. and the the it's got a full list a very full list it's got um (coughs) excuse me i want to say it has 60 trophies yes so so quite a big list but the thing is is that there's a debug menu so you can get the platinum in about five minutes and uh it's on on certain forums it's very uh contentious as to whether or not this should be allowed whether whether it was accidentally left in the debug mode or purposely put in there for trophy hunters because it's it's one of those you know you would think like it's like a rack game it's like four dollars so the the theory going around is did they put this in on purpose just to make the money i i don't know but well that's totally allowable for a spam game i think it is very allowable for a spam game yes but i'm talking about people who care about leaderboard rankings or people who who um oh i see have a very specific idea of what trophies should or should not be or what platinum trophies should or should not be well, well as you at- as you know, my 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 charter, if you like, my reason uh, for being as a spam hunter is to devalue the trophy system in any way possible. <laughs> so this, I think, is a perfect a perfect game for 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 us or for me. So you're you're chaotic, what chaotic evil? <laughs> well, no, I'm a spam hunter, and I, this is clearly spam. Uh, I, I think. So, <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you would recommend this as a as a. As well, a the, the and the the debate is: was this meant? that's what i meant was was this meant to be a spam game with a purposely left in debug menu or was it just an accident we forgot to take out the debug menu and we were actually were trying to put out a real game yes it may have been yeah well what i appreciate about this game is i mean this isn't the first time this has happened we had conan exiles uh, followed a a similar thing with the the debug but that that platform conan exiles Five minutes. Of course, the the Jack two or Jack yes, uh, three, quick. Jack two or three, which one? Yeah. Uh, two, I think it was. I want to say, and I'll say that, and it probably Jack was two. three, but it was one. <laughs> it was one of those two. There was sort of a debug um, for both, but one much more than the other. Yeah. And then um, the other one I'm thinking of is um, the infamous one. Do you remember oh, this on Vita from Korea? Is this the one you're going to reference? Yes, it, it was Corpse What's Party. It Yes, Corpse Party. Corpse Very Party. Good. Very good. Yes. That was probably the one that really started it all. A platinum you could get in about 30 seconds through uh, was it? the debug. Yeah, debug menu. And that was a good You know, debug. Corpse Party is another another platinum I'm the first person in the world to have earned. Oh, really? Did you um, use for the, the uh, <laughs> No, for the English <laughs> translation. Uh, well, it's quite a long game, isn't it? It's not a, it's not a short. No, it's not. But it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not terribly long, but it's no. not, you know, a 10 minute, 30 seconds, you know, text skip visual novel. No, no, no. Excellent. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So that well, was, that, that was my spam I played this week. That That's good. Well, I have a little, just a little bit to add. Obviously, uh, I'm sure you used it as well. There is a, a fine video guide out there. There's probably multiple video guides by now um, out there. So, you know, you just, just whack that in and play through it if you haven't already. Uh, one thing to watch out for though, is I don't know if this happened to you, Mindy, the trophies pop a little bit late. I'm not, you know, crazy late, but they they can. Um, mm. I think it's just the sheer amount of because there's sixty trophies. That's right. And if you look at the li- at the list, there's a trophy for beating every stage. Yeah. And there's I think thirty stages. Yeah. Something like that. Thirty, uh, thirty, and five bonus levels. Something like that. That's and right. so while it takes you very little time, probably, I don't know, 30 seconds to click the buttons on all the stages, you know, there's going to be a, a delay in these trophies popping because it's, you know, they were not me- all meant to unlock sequentially like that. That's right. Yeah. So, Just so- like when you do an auto pop of sound shapes, like that's still going to take you. Um you're still going to be sitting there for several minutes waiting for all these trophies to pop, especially if you're on the PS3. Um, So I think if you get to a point where you're doing an actual thing you need to do, like the, the jumping on the, on the dragon and the training stage or whatever. um, If you hit this kind of 
block of downtime, it's just the system catching up and that kind of delays your trophy pop. But there's nothing wrong with it. No. Everything will pop, but yeah, some of them do do have a bit of a delay in in popping. Yeah, good. So so don't don't panic if you um if you don't. I know I when I finished it, I was I was missing a few or, or they were delayed or whatever, and so I went in to sync the trophies because I wasn't sure if I'd done it all or done it right. And I, I I've done I, that before and gotten a gotten a screenshot of your trophy log. Yeah, well, exactly. I was sort of in there and I'd realised that I was missing a couple or you know a couple and the platinum, and I sort of thought, oh oh, and then plat. The puss came in and I was like, oh, that's fantastic. I, I've got it. So, you know, it was it was a good experience, you know, for three or four minutes. So, but what else, you know, because that, that's only going to take you four minutes. What else can we find for people this week? That's, we, like I said, that's all I, like last week I played. That's all you have. Oh, you're not good at this. Uh, there, there's tons of stuff. <laughs> I was talking about I specifically played, thank you. Oh, I'm just talking about, well, see, we just throw out projections here, you know, oh. of what's coming up as well. You know, we, you know, we may or may not. I'll, I'll throw in the bird game. Obviously, we, we talked about that. The three stacks of that will be mm-hmm. will be uh, something to watch out for. I mean, potentially, what was that rat game you talked about in the drop? That maybe. We don't know yet, do we? That will depend. Oh, my, uh, my big sister? Yeah, that could be spam. We'll have to wait and uh, I mean, you well, know, I it has actually, a track You know, I actually, uh, I this will be edited out, but we took a five minute break between game releases and, and finishing up the podcast. And in that time, the, the friend of mine that I mentioned got the platinum actually contacted me. And I said, actually, you know, just out of curiosity, how long is, is my big sister? She said it took, she said going in blind, it took me about 10 hours and that's going in blind. So let's assume. Oh, okay. Um, you know, three to five hours let's just generalize it and cut it in half and say if there's a walkthrough which she usually she does mm. walkthroughs often you know this i don't know if that would qualify as spam i would qualify it as an easy platinum mm-hmm. but not but not spam like like uh you know i think maybe low grade spam I, it's it's a tough call because would you call like artifacts monday game spam just because you can do them in under two hours, they're not necessarily spam. No, but they're not, you know, they're too too long for me. Yeah. Well, it's true. Yeah. I mean, this is a topic for another time, but spam does not necessarily mean a bad game. You know, I will have to convert you on this, I can see, but that's that's for another another time. So I'm going to throw out some more because I know that our... our um, there's more uh, There's more energy... That's you beat me to, uh, yes. Stacks yeah, we've got, coming we've got out. Plenty of these energy balance invasion cycles. So you know the, the biggest challenge for that will just be figuring out which region it is, whatever's left, and then um. That, that well, it looks like they're all Vita stacks, so you'd have to do the Vita trick. Well, I assume yeah, the, the PS4 will follow. I, you know what? I'm willing to bet these are. Uh, I'm willing to bet these are physical stacks. It's it is possible. Oh wait, they didn't come out in Asia. These are probably Asian. Stacks. Yeah. Yeah, you, quite often the, the physical uh, stacks are also on the Hong Kong uh, store through that Asian label too. So I'm sure that's that's where they'll be uh, with, with the PS4 one probably coming. Uh, this Darkwood, this looks interesting as well. I mean, the list looks very straightforward. It's always a good sign when there are no bronzes, lots of gold and only a couple of silver. <laughs> we'll, we'll have, have to wait very on that true. because it is an RPG, so it, it could be a lot longer than it looks, although it says uh, Complete Chapter 2 is a gold trophy, so perhaps that's another one you won't have to finish. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see. And then it, I would be remiss if I did not throw this one out. I know uh, Mr. Unknown was looking forward to this game at one point. Perhaps he will he will still find it in another form. Uh, is Furwind, which is a full list and, a, and I think a full game. So, you know, again, potentially not spam in that it may be a little bit longer, but it looks like a looks like a cat okay so so not everything is good about it obviously if there's a cat involved but you know aside from that it, it could be good it looks like a is that a cat? it looks like a fox yeah well it, i don't know what it is i think it's a fox dude well look okay now suddenly it's improved in my eyes it's a, a fox yeah oh yeah look there's a trophy called traveler fox oh. that's totally a fox oh, it's totally a fox yes they, they've removed the cat from the uh <laughs> the the western edition obviously i didn't see that yes so my my fault listeners uh what else have we got some bomb chicken you you would think a game called Bomb Chicken would be would be quick and spammy, but unfortunately, it does not look like that. That's a, that is a shame. But yeah, I don't know. So there's a few things there. A few things, mostly mostly just kind of stacks of older stuff. 
Yeah, there's, there's one more I'm going to throw in because this game intrigues me. This Ugly Dolls, an imperfect adventure. I know we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, very briefly when it came out. Uh, and I see, again, it's not it's not that short. Uh, people have done it in a day or so, but it looks, it looks like a, a co-op adventure you know, a game that uh, I don't know if you can see the list of the picture here, Mindy. Maybe a game that's aimed more at the uh, the younger intellect. So you know, something that I would quite enjoy, I think, uh, through it. And the list looks very manageable. So I'm really on, really close to buying this. I think so. You know, maybe next week we can we can talk about. That. You know, you know what's funny is, um, a I'm surprised ugly dolls are still a thing. I had oh, an ugly doll um, yonks yeah. ago. They came out when I was like, oh gosh. I think I was still in high school when mm. they came out. Um, so I'm kind of surprised they're making a comeback. But my, again, my friend that I was talking about with my big sister, she wrote a trophy guide oh, for this game. Oh, you know more about it than me then. Up on, um, up on PlayStationTrophies.org. Oh, a guide already. And uh, she says it's an 8 to 12 hour platinum with a 2, two to 3 out of 10 difficulty. So not, no, you know. Not, not short span. Not not effortless, but yeah. looks like not particularly taxing. You know, maybe maybe if you're tired, you know, you, you've exhausted yourself with all these five minute games, and you're you're ready to sink your 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 teeth into a full length game at eight to ten hours. Uh, that could be the the one <laughs> for you. You know, while you're waiting for the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, fifteenth, and twentieth patch of Days Gone that will uh, we will be receiving this week uh, on that game. So so lots of options there, I think. And I'm I'm assuming. You talked about um, the rat game from two weeks ago, uh, uh, Invasion Zero. Yes, uh, yes. So called? that one, I don't know. If you, have you played that yourself? Or no, that's a mixed bag. A, a game that you know, obviously, once you've done once, it's like it's it's like a Space Invaders, it is, right? Yeah, it's a bit like. Did you ever play the Super Destronaut? Uh, this was uh, DX, Sim- similar style. But, um, game that this one is probably a, a right. little bit more difficult because you only have two lives uh but you know not it has mm-hmm. a checkpoint in the middle um and you know it's it's still very short or whatever else uh so it's worth a look and there is an option in that to change the color configuration in the menu uh, which i would suggest doing because it is a lot easier to see the, the bullets uh in that one as well i know one of our guiding friends mentioned that in their video guide the other one deemed it unnecessary that's probably because he has much better eyesight than us uh, or myself, uh, perhaps. But that, that's a handy tip if your eyesight is not brilliant uh, on that. So, look, I don't know. That is tons of stuff this week. You know, if you haven't done the... Uh, I do I do want to ask you, actually, about something on your your uh, list that you could, uh, I guess... That's dangerous. <laughs> that you could, I guess, technically call spam um, yeah. because it's a visual novel. So if oh. you text skip it, you could talk spam. Yes. But I see here that you've stacked you've stacked it actually. Uh Nurse Love Syndrome on Vita. Yes. Nurse Love Syndrome. Do you think it would actually be something people would actually like, or should it be treated as a as a spam game? Well that you just text skip through. Yeah, look, it's a Tommy, so I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, it's it's highly, you know, Japanese housewife material. Uh, you know, if that interests you, then then you would love it. I I've actually tried. There was the uh, nurse love addiction before this, so I did try and read some of this, uh, the the previous iteration, and it, it's pretty pretty soppy. It's a little bit too much, I think. You know, I'm mm-hmm. uh, possibly the wrong gender. I'm definitely the right age for it, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I spent enough time at home, so you know, there's def- definitely definitely everything else going for me there. Uh, but you know, I, I look. I, these games are always directed to the the you know the the straight market as well. You know, uh, I look forward to when it maybe you know we, we see one presented from the other side maybe that's what i'm waiting for a little bit more as well although there is in this one i'm pretty sure there's a little bit of lesbian action as well but it's all you know it's all above the clothing there's nothing too much there if you're thinking of getting your kitties to skip it or anything it's not not a problem uh if you are going to play this game as a skip though i would suggest it's a long vn and it's probably five hours relatively long uh i would definitely suggest doing both at the same time i would not do them back to back it works perfectly because there's a lot of time between decisions but yeah. How many people have two Vitas? 
Uh, well, I've heard trophy hunters sometimes have multiple consoles of the same console, so I, d- I don't know. <laughs> That's fantastic. You want to bankroll one for me? <laughs> well, uh, look, you know, I didn't realize we'd entered the uh, the, the, the Vita giveaway section at this point, but you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I uh, look, I, I would suggest tr- uh, trolling around those um, those uh, rat threads. I, I understand lots of things are being given away, game codes. Uh, movie tickets, all sorts of things. So maybe a Vita will come up. Who knows uh, <laughs> as we go along there. But, yeah, look, the only other one was the VN. I mean, if you're interested in VNs, obviously uh, the EVE Rebirth Terra as well. I forgot about that. Uh, PS4 and also Vita. That's a much shorter option. Yeah, both are, are, are very expensive, uh, you know, so if, if you're looking cost-wise, probably the Nurse Love Syndrome is the better option at this stage. Mm-hmm. But as you know, uh, VNs always hold their price. So if you buy it physically, you will uh, most likely or almost definitely get your uh, return on investment, particularly on the EVE. If one. Yeah, so I think that that's more than enough spam. If you get through all of that plus this episode this week, you are doing fantastically well. You know, and and while you know while you've done all that, you're still waiting. Well, for you know, maybe going. maybe you should re re uh, reconfigure the uh, the re- podcast layout here and put all the spam games at the beginning so people can download them and then Ooh. play them while they're listening to the rest of the podcast. That's true. That's true. Well, I think I that gives of, them more like time that. to work on that goal of of fifty plats a week. Yeah, well, a week. I mean, you know, at least 50, I think, this week. Uh, that or is a great deal. Well, well, look, I, I feel we're in a state of, uh, I feel we're in a bit of a state of flux at the moment, listeners. There's change all around us. Every day uh, there's something different going on uh, here. So who knows what will happen, you know, next week. And, you know, in, in the spirit of, of, of change and trust, I've enjoyed uh, today a lot. I hope you have, Mindy. This is the point where you have to say yes. <laughs> Do I? Yeah, well, it, well, I control the edit, so I feel that either way you will be saying yes here. <laughs> absolutely congratulations <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that one so you know with, with that in mind I'm, I'm thinking i may extend the olive, olive branch of podcasting to you again next week do you think you could indulge me again uh for uh, for another episode perhaps i think i could swing that yeah Excellent. Well, I, I do appreciate that. And again, I'd like to thank you so much for, for giving up time today. We did have our listeners quite a bit of trouble earlier on today uh, on my end getting the recording going. So I've sucked a lot of Mindy's time up today, but I do, <laughs> I do really appreciate that. Uh, it, it, it has been a, it's been a lot of fun uh, on my end. Uh, as usual, I must ask, Mindy, where can we find you? Would you like to self-promote? Um, well, I do have a Twitter. It's at the mind is a city. The mind is a city. It's all one, one word. Also, uh, I am on the guide team over at PlayStation Org, so you can find me over there. Drop me a, a, you know, drop a message in my forum inbox there, or just drop messages on the forums. I will likely see them. Definitely. So reach out and say hello. She is a she is a very friendly person. I think I think you'll agree after <laughs> listening uh, to our podcast together. Uh, if you're trying to uh, contact with uh, Mr. Unknown, he's available in all the same usual ways uh, through his Twitch uh, at Mr. Unknown. I think that's still uh, still going, and uh, Twitter as well at Mr. Unknown. If you're trying to find the show, we are available on iTunes, podcast, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. Yes, that's all of them. Uh, and we're also on Twitter as well. So please, you know, I don't know what you do there. Come and follow us or, or I don't know, don't follow us, whatever you feel like. Uh, and we're at push to plat dot. Oh, just push to plat, isn't it? There's no dot com on Twitter. So, and look, I'm learning every, every day. And is that the number two or is that spelled out? Oh, it's the number two. Number yes, two, right? Yes, push yeah, to yeah, push plat. To yeah, we had a bit of a issue with the names but yeah we did get that one so it is the number two push two flat yeah excellent at the thing and i'm gonna take a i'm gonna take a bit of a crash course on how twitter works so i'll start putting twitter worthy stuff on there at some point you know in the next year or something probably uh so if for no other reason it's worth checking out for that so thanks again for joining us and uh thank you you're very welcome thanks for having me happy trophy hunting to everyone we'll catch you next week see ya bye